Today, we're going to talk about the quality of life for both your parents and you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Jo, and we're here with my sister Jackie, continuing our conversation about caring for aging parents who have dementia. We had our parents at a variety of facilities, including assisted living, memory care, and skilled care. Each facility had different policies and procedures, and some had wonderful resource books, guides that gave you schedules, menus, policies, phone numbers, maintenance information, and others didn't have anything. And so we were constantly scrambling for what's that number? How do we call maintenance? How do we get in touch with the RN? So ask when you're considering a facility if they have a resource book. Now, when they were in assisted living, they did have the resource book. Mm -hmm. That was a plus. The negative we experienced there was how they did their menus. They did not have full kitchens in their rooms. And in fact, most of them didn't have even a tiny little kitchenette with a sink and a little mm -hmm. tiny refrigerator. They were encouraged to take every meal in the dining room. If they were not able to for a medical reason, then they would absolutely bring the meals to them. Mm -hmm. But they had a menu for each week and the menu was breakfast, lunch, and supper. And everyone included the main choice with all of the sides, an alternative with all of the sides. And if you didn't like any of those, then down at the bottom, there were even extra a la carte things that they could get at any time if they didn't like any of those things. Including and alternate desserts and sides and drinks. And while that would be good for us, yeah. it was extremely overwhelming. overwhelming. I would have to read them every choice for everyone and they were so frazzled. frustrated and frazzled by the time that it was over they didn't even care what i put down it was overwhelming it was way too much finding out about how menu options are provided for your parent is more important than you may think because really at this point these are some of the only decisions they have to make and so they take it seriously but at the same time it can be overwhelming for them. They're just not able. So then we get mama to memory care and they have one main meal and they've got a few alternatives that they can have. Peanut butter and jelly, chicken one salad. One or two little yeah, things. Only they weren't real happy about you ever choosing <laughs> the alternative. Yeah. And in fact, sometimes we just flat out tell her. You don't get that today. You don't get that. Then we get mama to skilled nursing and by this time she is very compliant and they only offer one meal. They did a fabulous job of preparing it for each resident's needs. If it needed to be cut up for them, they mm -hmm. cut it up. If it needed to almost be pureed for them, never complained about doing any. If they needed to sit there and help feed them, they were happy, happy to do it. The interesting thing we found out that some of mama's favorite foods she had forgotten yeah. and some things that she would have never eaten if you had given her a million dollars she would eat and just talk about how good, good it yeah. was <laughs> yeah so sometimes less is best yeah another thing you may want to ask about is is the staff amenable to helping your parent turn the tv on find the phone find the remote because things go missing, things are always broken, <laughs> meaning operator User error. error yeah. Another thing about quality of life to ask about is how often does the staff check for toileting? How often does the staff help bathe? We just assumed that she would get a bath every day. It was kind of just a shock to yeah. us that when they said, oh, she gets a bath on Mondays and Thursdays. And we're like, excuse me, only twice a week? So there are some different things in terms of the way people are cared for that you might wanna ask those specific questions how often. One of her days to be bathed was Wednesday. And there was a mix up, I think, between hospice and the staff there. One thought the other was doing it and it ended up where she went for several weeks, probably without a bath. 
So ask, how often do they get bathed? What happens if the resident says she doesn't need a bath? Do they still get a bath? Because our mother would say she didn't need a bath and we would have to insist that they bathe her even if she was resistant. Another thing was a piece of information that our cousin gave us. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Bill. He told me to get Mama a baby doll, and I knew Mama well enough to know she ain't gonna get along with the baby doll. No, I can't imagine. So I ran out to the store to get her a stuffed animal, and to my chagrin, the only one that was in the store was in the adorable pink dog. <laughs> I got it anyway. Do you know she hugged that thing and she would kiss on that thing and she would just curl up and just love on that little thing. It was a security blanket. So my advice to you, give them a stuffed animal. There was a time when she wouldn't have been ready for it. Right. But when she got to memory care, it was absolutely warranted and it was one of the best things so that was a good piece of advice. Another thing that you're going to need to consider and it's a little tricky because if you have a parent with dementia you don't always know if they're telling you correctly if they're remembering correctly but in one of the facilities mama would complain to us about the staff being mean mm -hmm. and getting in her face and yelling at her because she was trying to help another resident. Which, just an aside, that is one of the sweetest things about the memory care and the skilled nursing, mm -hmm. is how those residents... Will care for one another. They just take care of mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And she was simply trying to help this woman who was obviously struggling... To eat. Before even that, the other one who would get her walker, and then she couldn't balance to pull the chair out and hold on to her walker. So mama was trying to help mm -hmm. and she would tell us the ladies would just get in her face and tell her to mind her own business. That, that was her job, she would take care of it. She didn't need her help. When mama first started telling us, we thought, surely not, Yeah. surely not, until we overheard it. Not them doing it to mama while we were there, but doing it to other residents. And you just have to realize if they're going to do that in front of any family member. What in the world are they doing when there's not a family member around? That's something I would err on the side of believing your parent. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to know. They've got dementia. They're, some of the stories they come up with and their truth about what's happened that day you know is not exactly accurate. So. It's hard to know who do you believe, who do you trust. The other side of that is we have overheard caregivers who didn't know we were around treat our mother with such love and concern and respect in the, in the kindest of all ways. And it just made our heart warm to know that even when they didn't know they were being watched, that they were absolutely treating our mother the way we hoped that she would always be treated. One of the issues that, that came up in terms of quality of life when my mother was in the memory care facility was that she complained that her vision was not good and that she needed new glasses. So I think we ended up getting three or four. Because it actually started in assisted living. Mm -hmm. She had several visits to the eye doctor. Her vision was changing. Whether that had anything to do with her dementia and what was going on there, we're not doctors, I, I don't know. I think it is a part of the cortical dementia, the vision, the spatial. But we had to try several things, and we ended up getting two different pairs of glasses, one for near and one for distance, and it turns out it was all for naught. Once she got to memory care. She did not have the ability to keep up with the plot of a story. She couldn't really see well to read. And since it was difficult for her to understand the story, she would just rather not do it. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're gonna get your parent glasses if that's what they need. As long as they're in a position to where they can read and comprehend or watch a television program and comprehend, then you absolutely need to go to the nth degree to make sure that they have 
a prescription, no matter how often that changes. Right, because you want them to be as independent as they can be. Don't do things for them that they can do for themselves. Just like if you have kids, you know when they're little, you may want to tie their shoe or button up their, but they need to do it. And so it's the same thing with your parents. Once they get dementia, let them do it for as long as they can. Yeah. The last thing is the phone. Both of our parents had iPhones and were very savvy about calling and texting and doing... Emojis. Yeah, the <laughs> Daddy loved emojis. emojis. <laughs> there came a time when they just couldn't manage all the buttons and all the choices and all the options. So we ended up getting Mama a jitterbug which is one of those phones that's not a smartphone, but it has bigger buttons and it has a few program numbers. You hit somebody's name and it calls it for you. And that worked for her for a while. So be aware that your parent may not be able to use the same phone they've always used and been very adept at using because to communicate with a cousin or a friend or an old neighbor is part of what keeps them satisfied and content. Yeah. You know. We even wrote step-by-step -step instructions for how to make a call. Like Jenny said, it worked for a while. When it got to the point to where there was no dexterity left to even make a call, we would either make a call for her or one of the favorite things that she did enjoy was listening to voicemail from friends and family because she didn't have to engage. She could just listen and she would hear the voice and be reminded of the person because she held her recognition to the very end. She could recognize a face or a voice and know exactly who you were. For that, we were extremely thankful. Listening to a voice message was really important to her. It was a connection. Yeah. So our hope is that by sharing our experiences, you'll be able to better deal when you find yourself in this situation if your parent has dementia. And next time, we're going to be having a conversation about boundaries, how to set them, and why it's so important to do so. And if you have any questions at all about anything that we've discussed today or that we haven't discussed, be sure and write it down in the comments and we will make sure that we address it. And if you're getting value, don't forget to like and subscribe.